Hi guys, so this is going to be a video series on swing trading. So I have divided uh, the swing trading topic into five sub parts. In the first part, this is this one. Uh, we'll, I'll be explaining what is swing trading. We'll be covering covering up some uh, basics of uh, swing trading as well. In the second part, I'll be taking up support and resistance uh, with respect to swing trading. In third part, we'll be uh, covering up instrument selection. That is, uh, which is the best instrument to you know trade when you're practicing this uh, swing trading techniques part 4 will be about a top down approach this is something i'll be covering up in de uh, great detail ahead and uh, part 5 will be about swing trading strategies now this part 5 will be subdivided into a uh, few parts because uh, all strategies cannot be covered in one part right so this series is uh, focused on what to trade when to trade and how to trade it so let's get started in this channel, we talk about trading, investing and market analysis to help you become a better investor and trader. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So learning objectives of this first part are as follows. So I'll be taking you through some basics of uh, swing trading. Uh, then I'll be doing a comparison between swing trading, positional trading and the buy and hold approach. Uh, then I'll be moving uh, on to trading instruments that are available when we are trying to swing trade. Uh, the next point that I'll be covering is uh, how swing trading fits in overall market strategy of a full-time trader. Uh, then I'll be taking up uh, whether you should uh, adopt a system-based uh, swing trading uh, technique or you should go in for a discretionary trading approach. Uh, then there are two uh, distinctive uh, uh, swing trading approach that a trader can take. One is the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach. I'll be uh, telling you why the top-down approach is the more preferred method to swing trade. And in the end, I'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about trading platform tools and your broker selection. So this part is focused on the, the very basics of swing trading. I do understand that not everybody is uh, proficient with the uh, trading and invest investing as a topic. So which is why uh, I'm deliberately making an attempt to start with the very basics and then build on to advanced concepts. So I'll just answer this basic question. What is swing trading? So swing trading is basically a short term trading method uh, that you can apply to stock futures and options. Uh, in, in swing trading, what you do is you take on positions and you kind of keep it for about two days to few weeks. This also depends on preference of a trader. Most of the traders actually uh, trade for a period of two days to 20 days or 10 days. And that again depends on, uh, uh, you know, your psychological makeup as a trader. So most of the times uh, the trades taken in swing trade are, are based on technical analysis concepts. Uh, but again, uh, this is not limited to technical anal analysis only. Uh, in case you are uh, uh, following fundamental analysis very closely. So some of the concepts like earning projections or you know earnings estimate, uh, these kind of uh, triggers can be used for trade entries as well. But this would be uh, more specific around earning seasons or major stock events. So I'll just cover up a, a basic difference of what is swing trading, positional trading and buy and hold approach. Now buy and hold is more uh, applicable to uh, investments, uh, but I have seen in markets that uh, there are traders out there who uh, you know like to buy stocks and kind of hold them from a trading perspective also. So which is why I've kept this buy and hold approach in, you know, sort of a trading topic as well. So in swing trading, you know, as I've said, it's a short term method and the position uh, holding period ranges from two days to about few weeks. Positional trading again, it's, it's sort of a medium term method. It's not a short term method. And uh, the time duration for a train, uh, trade typically ranges between a few weeks to few months. And buy and hold approach, obviously I told you it's like a trader uh, is taking up a position and keeping that position for a, a period of uh, one year or few years. Now this happens as well because uh, uh, now mostly if you uh, buy a stock for one year or more that itself categorizes as an investment but there are some traders out there in the market who like to you know keep their investment portfolio separate and like to keep their trading portfolio separate and in that trading portfolio they kind of uh, you know want to hold positions for one or two years as well so on this chart i'll just show you what is swing trading so this is about swing trading right so these swings that you're seeing this on the way up, this on the way down, again, this is on the way down. This one is again on the way down. So these, these swings that you're seeing, these are actually categorized as swing trading because you're trying to capture this swing. 
or this one right now if you see this particular movement uh, this cannot be categorized as a swing because uh, there are some sort of retracements happening on the upside and the downside right so basically a swing is where uh, you know uh, you can clearly mark out a pivot and price either falls or rises from there so that is the job of a swing trader uh, his aim is to capture the um, you know most relevant swing that is likely to happen right so positional trading is sort of different because uh, a trader is more bothered about the larger price movement here. So in this particular case, that price movement would be from uh, July to October 2015. And in this case, it would, it would be from April 2016 to about April 2017. And in this particular case, it would be about uh, April 27 to uh, January 2018. So these are the kind of uh, moves that a positional trader prefers because he likes to get into positions and he kind of holds on to that positions for a period of let's say um, few months right so the buy and hold technique is you know hypothetically if you're holding a position here even if the price falls about uh, 50 percent you still you know kind of hold that position and you don't kind of um, exit on every downturn as such and you keep on holding that position till the you know relevant conditions prevail so uh, this sort of technique actually requires a lot of patience and it's a completely different topic which is why i won't uh, go there but uh, swing trading and positional trading concepts are more or less the same except for the fact that you know time duration of trade is much shorter in swing trading whereas in positional trading it is much longer so we'll just come to the trading instruments aspect which trading instruments are uh, uh, you know available for, for swing trading uh, before heading forward, I would just tell you that this part is, uh, you know, uh, a sort of theoretical uh, part because uh, um, this will actually form the building blocks for part two, three, four and five. Uh, I don't think uh, I would end at part five because this is an extremely vast subject. And I think uh, as of now, I've just planned for five parts, but I think it would easily extend up to 10 parts. So, uh, which is why this part one is extremely uh, crucial because you need to get your basics right in order to understand what is uh, going to be taught in part two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. So the trading instruments that are available uh, for swing trading, you know, they kind of depend on market conditions and the trend direction and the volatility conditions. Now these three specific aspects I'll be taking up in detail in remaining parts, that is part two, three, four, five. But you have to remember that swing trading is, uh, you know, sort of a short term trading method. So which is why instrument selection is absolutely crucial here. Uh, the three most popular instruments that, you know, we have available are stocks, futures and options. Now, in case you're a beginner or you're trying to, you know, learn how to trade, I would tell you that you should stick to stocks when it comes to swing trading because risk management and position sizing is, is much easier in stocks and uh, this should be your most preferred instrument in fact my personal preference is always to stick with stocks as far as swing trading is concerned so futures is the most popular instrument because uh, at a very small margin you can actually build up pretty large positions but it is actually also one of the instruments that leads to huge capital destruction so which is why you know i categorize this instrument as you know risk to reward is not that great in this uh, futures instrument especially for beginners because it's it's kind of difficult to manage uh, risk in futures options is actually the most rewarding instrument uh, but the experience level required to manage a trade in options is uh, quite high uh, it is more rewarding in terms of risk to reward and there is a you know limited capital that you can use especially uh, lose especially if you're buying options uh, but again uh, i would i would still say that uh, in case you're starting out or even your you know two three years sort of you have experience in the market still try and stick to stocks before you graduate to the next level so in terms of uh, moving up to the next level i would say that first start with stocks then move to futures and then finally try your hand on options right because in my opinion options are one of the most trickiest instrument to trade if, whether from positional perspective or swing trading perspective uh, i'm an options trader as well so i trade these uh, instruments quite frequently uh, which is why out of experience i'm telling you that uh, trading options is actually uh, pretty difficult it's actually more lucrative because most of the brokers and uh, you know uh, 
advisors if i may use the word they kind of push uh, retail traders to pick up positions in options but i think you should be away from uh, this instrument for a long time until uh, you master how to trade stocks then you need to master how to trade futures and then you should move on to options so that is why uh, that is how i prefer uh, for a trader to graduate from one instrument to uh, other so i'll just come to this um, aspect which is swing trading as an overall market strategy now why this is important is because i often see that uh, traders commit a lot of money in swing trading uh, and they are also not clear about uh, what type of market strategy they should adopt so swing trading in my opinion should not form 100% of your market strategy because in market strategy i'll just show you this chart first yeah so this is the sort of market strategy uh, you know i follow in trading so my uh, market strategy comprises of uh, three independent strategies which is one is swing trading the second is positional trading and third is investments right so these three sort of investment and trading techniques actually uh, form my complete market strategy so this uh, i would say that this depends on trader because uh, there will be uh, occasions where a trader would feel that you know he's he's just a swing trader he does not want to invest or he does not want to trade positionally that is fine but in general if you're starting out uh, you know uh, try to classify your market strategy into three uh, sub topics which is positional trading swing trading and long term investment now in positional trading you should stick to stocks and futures in swing trading you should you can experiment with stocks futures and options and for long term investments you know there are a lot of options available that is stocks bonds deposits gold silver you know the list is endless so if you're starting out uh, i would say that for positional trading which is a completely separate topic and i will cover it up once i finish with swing trading and options trading topic uh, for positional trading and swing trading start with stocks first don't move to futures and options uh, until and unless you sort of master how to trade stocks and long term investments again i have covered um, some bit of this topic in detail so you can check out the channel for you know how to select stocks to invest in stock market so i'll just come uh, uh, to asset allocation when it comes to market strategy now this is the sort of asset allocation that i follow uh, so i had shown in this previous previous slide that uh, my market strategy comprises of uh, swing trading positional trading and investment now the way i divide my capital is that i allocate about 10% capital to swing trading uh, then i allocate about 30% capital to positional trading and for long term investments i allocate 60% of my money right so this is the sort of um, income categories that i have classified based on my you know uh, psychological comfort level so for me the positional trading that i do is my active income because i am a full time trader the swing trading that i do is my passive income that is uh, my life does not depend on uh, uh, this income it mostly depends on pos uh, positional trading and long term investments obviously uh, you cannot categorize them as income because they are the sort of long term returns that you uh, take out of the market so the modified uh, chart that i showed you this is the initial chart so based on capital allocation this would be my uh you know market strategy that turn 10% of my money goes into uh swing trading about 30% goes into positional trading and 60% of my money goes into investments right so this is how i sort of uh divide my money when it comes to my overall market strategy now understanding this uh in especially if you're a beginner is important get into the habit of dividing your money into you know three or four segments which you prefer you can also add one you know let's say fixed deposit segment or ipo segment whatever segment you want to add based again on your comfort level but get into the habit of um, allocating your money in terms of the various strategies you are going to apply in market because not all years you know will pass by where all these three strategies would make you money uh, it would be that Uh, those years are extremely rare when you will make money in positional trading swing trading and long term investment at the same time so there are times when investments won't do well only swing trading and positional trading would do well and then there would be time only when investments would do well and swing trading and you know in positional trading you won't make that much money so which is why it is extremely important uh, you know to allocate capital to different sort of market strategies so now i'll come to uh, 
swing trading when it comes to trading systems or uh, discretionary trading. Now trading systems is when you uh, sort of take a set of rules and uh, you kind of uh, put them into a computer program and that program actually gives you entry or exit uh, signals. Now uh, system trading is something, uh, it's, it's a good thing especially in India um, as of uh, now you're seeing a lot of brokers providing these uh, backend APIs through which you can uh, sort of build your own trading systems and do kind of uh, automation stuff you know you just buy and sell based on whatever triggers are coming out of your trading systems. Now this is a good thing uh, but uh, for an old school trader like me I have always preferred uh, discretionary trading because uh, this is where my own analysis or my own reading of market comes into picture. Uh, now uh, this ultimately depends on uh, from trader, trader to trader whether he wants to uh, make a swing trading system or whether he wants to practice uh, swing trading based on uh, you know sort of discretionary approach where he'll be looking at charts, he'll be looking at other indicators and what the broader market is doing and then taking a call whether he wants to trade in this environment or wants to sit out. Whereas a trading system does not differentiate in any market condition unless and until you have some advanced you know uh, programming out there uh, which can uh, you know see into the insights of uh, what is going on in overall market. Uh, I think a human mind is only capable of doing that. Uh, I don't think uh, various programs or softwares out there are capable enough of uh, uh, you know sort of replacing uh, the insight that a human mind can have with respect to trading and overall market conditions. So in my opinion most of the uh, trading systems actually uh, fail to capitalize on the human element and that forms a huge part of trading. In case you've been in the market for one or two years you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, a trader's intuition, a trader's judgment or his ability to foresee what is going to happen. I don't think there is any trading system yet that can actually replace uh, these qualities of a trader. So which is why I always prefer a discretionary trading approach where I want to uh, you know uh, rely on my ability to read the market rather than a system's ability to uh, you know exit or entry a trade. Uh, there's one more point I want to highlight and that is um, in discretionary trading your trade management is a lot better because you at times you look at the screen and you know that uh, in case you're long, you know that uh, sudden selling pressure comes into the market. You can immediately, uh, based on your intuitive skills, you can exit that trade. But that does not happen in a trading system, which is why, uh, you know, my personal bias is always towards uh, discretionary trading. But I leave it up to you uh, whether you want to follow this approach or you want to, uh, you know, prefer something like an automated trading system. That is also fine because there are traders who get wonderful results out of uh, trading system because they remove their emotions out of, um, uh, you know, um, their participation in the market. So that also works. I'm not saying that does not work. But I personally prefer to be completely involved in trading. And um, I believe that there is no system out there that can actually replace uh, your ability to read the overall market. So now we come to our trading approach. Now as we as we'll be covering up uh, more and more parts in swing trading, uh, you would uh, see more of this in detail. So there are two sorts of uh, approach that you can follow. One is the top down approach and another one is the bottom up approach. Now I have a completely different part for this top, top down approach. In top down approach what happens is we start with the broader market index then we move on to sector and then we uh, uh, kind of pick individual stocks. So this approach is a more holistic approach. Um, in my opinion you get more high probability trades when you sort of follow this approach rather than bottom up approach where you know you don't look at index, you don't look at sectors, you simply go to uh, you know you simply follow stock specific approach and you pick up stocks for swing trading. Now uh, luckily I'm doing this uh, swing trading series in kind of market environment uh, which is not conducive for long trades. There are many stocks uh, that are available for swing trading as of now on the long side. But look what will happen if you are doing the bottom up approach you will be selecting stocks uh, for a, a long trade uh, but the overall context or the overall direction of the market at least for the short term has been down and volatile and uh, which is why I think you will have more whipsaws if you sort of uh, follow bottom up approach 
that is stock specific approach in current market conditions so i hope my point is clear which is why if you start with top down approach that is you uh, uh, take the trend of index then you move to trend of sectors and then you pick out stocks from those se- sectors in the direction of trend then i feel the uh, you know probability of picking out winning trades is more so personally i practice this top down approach and that is what i'll be uh, showing you in subsequent parts so before um, ending this part i'll just take up this subject of platform tools and broker uh, now again uh, i i've taken up this very basic topic because uh, traders out there are not familiar with you know basic concepts and these things also need to be covered in depth now by trading platform i mean uh, technical analysis softwares or a web based technical chart platform now for swing trading i think both of them can work in case you have a uh, technical software that's great you can actually customize your indicators have a pre screen ready every morning you can get up and directly pick out trades um, from that software a uh, web based system web based technical chart platform does have some drawbacks but in case you uh, don't want to invest in a stock uh, in a stock software then that's uh, completely fine that does not matter uh, when it comes to tools i would still maintain that a proper technical analysis software has more tools and more uh, sort of um, ability for you to manage or read your analysis well uh, just because of the amount of or the volume of tools that are available on a you know a proper technical analysis software you can pick out any software you want i personally use um, ninja trader emi broker market delta so it's up completely up to you in case you want to uh, the the most important topic that i want to focus on is broker now quite often uh, uh, for swing trading i think i will i will encourage you to go out and uh, you know pick out a discount broker that is low cost broker because margins as such are low when it comes to swing trading profits uh, but do your research properly while uh, uh, you know picking out a broker especially have a different account for positional trading and investment uh, because uh, have a full time account or a full time service brokers are there uh, keep your positional trading and investment uh, portfolio with them at far as uh, as far as swing trading portfolio is concerned you can maintain that with a low cost broker uh try and research on the kind of broker you are choosing from because um especially on event heavy days uh, you do tend to see that these low cost brokers kind of you know their system freezes the orders don't go through so these are the sort of things you need to consider before trying to shortlist a low cost broker so do your research well there are a lot of social platforms available where you will come to know whether on an event day that particular broker uh you know his system froze or not what about his customer service when such things happen you need to uh, you know sort of take those things into account as well um so uh, keep a keep a sort of price on your um on your account that you're going to hand over to your broker don't think that you have a small account today which is why you need to compromise on this broker aspect uh today you might be small but tomorrow you may grow into a very big trader so which is why always um, you know value yourself more and uh, ask questions to your broker before trying to sign up have a demo of his trading platform see whether you know his systems are capable enough to handle an event heavy heavy day and only then you go out and uh, you know pick out a broker so i'll just uh, summarize the key points here so this part was a very basic part that i wanted to do for uh, even beginners who don't know uh, much about swing trading and uh, if you see in my subsequent videos also other parts that i'm uh, doing uh, whether it's bank nifty series or relative strength series i'm trying to focus on one thing that is to start with basics and then build on to advanced concepts and this is something i will maintain Uh, throughout because i need everyone on same playing field before i can you know start discussing advanced topics so in the next part i'll be covering up uh, support and resistance level uh, how to determine that in swing trading because in swing trading if you if you can determine support and resistance level accurately or maybe in a range then half of your job is done so uh, again uh, this is planned for a five part series but uh, i i would uh, probably extend to about 10 to 12 parts because this is a vast topic and once i reach this uh, strategy section um i i know for sure that uh, you know this would extend to about 10 to 12 parts easily 
so that's all for today in case you have any doubt do leave a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and thanks a lot for watching this video click on the subscribe button and bell icon to get instantly notified when a new video is uploaded thank you for subscribing